Come on, we're going to have some fun this morning. Uh, we're in a series called Preparing uh, for Outpouring, and uh, uh, we're going to dive into this in, uh, in just a quick second. I felt like we actually should do something before we um, dive in, and so um, uh, I feel like there's, there's, uh, so there's a couple different things. First of all, I feel like that there's uh, some people here today, um, and you've been wrestling with like narcolepsy, so you just, you just fall asleep, and, um, and you just get really tired, and you go to sleep at work, and, and, that, and that kind of thing. So if that's you, go and just stand up, because Jesus is going to touch you this morning. Come on, come on, come on. Also, I feel like, um, uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, let's just celebrate Jesus here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Hey. I also feel like um, uh, you're, you don't have narcolepsy, but just lately um, you've been getting very, very sleepy and you wonder if there's something happening with like your testosterone levels or your estrogen or like you're just wondering what's going on with hormones or because you've been really tired lately and, um, and you don't know what's, uh, what's going on and, and, and the weather's been really affecting you and you just, and like, and you're just really like, it's just stand up if that's you and, um, uh, because, yeah, in fact, yeah, 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 awesome, awesome, awesome. And um, yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, and also with this, with these feelings, there's a lot of lies that are attached with them. And the enemy's been kind of um, bombarding your thoughts. And so it's not hormonal. It's actually, there's actually a spirit of slumber. And again, if, if you feel like there's been a spirit of slumber with just kind of this, it's not just physical, it's also in the soul. So it's like a certain level of just apathy or lethargy or indifference. And you're just kind of like, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. And yeah, just, just stand up because um, that's, that's, cause because the blood of Jesus is just going to come and that thing's going to get ripped out, off of you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's a spirit, okay? And, and, um, and, and the, you know, and the enemy will come and use natural things, natural things like the weather and natural things uh, like our health, but then he'll exploit it, okay? Because the enemy's not fair. He'll, he'll hit below the belt, yeah? Um, but how many of you know that, that Jesus dealt with the enemy? <laughs> come on. Okay, body of Christ, I'm not going to do the work you are. Everyone, stand. if you're near the, these people, I want you to stand. Just put a hand on them. You're not going to pray for the sick. Listen now. Don't go old school on me. We're not praying for the sick. We're healing the sick. And we're not going to say, if it be thy will, we're going to say, Lord, I know it's your will that none would perish. If, if, if you had your hand up but nobody is actually praying for you, would you hold your hand up really high it's just so that no one gets uh, left out? If you, all right, if, you, if you don't have somebody praying for you, lift up your hand up really high. Okay, this is what we're going to do. Now listen up. I'm going to count to three. And when I hit three, I want you to start warring in the spirit with your prayer tongue. Okay? And then when I, when I, when I say now, we're going to lift up a shout of praise and every heavy yoke is going to be shattered with that sound of praise. Now listen, every demonic spirit in this room, listen up. You do not have any authority to function in this room. We declare the blood of Jesus. And I declare right now, even people watching online, that if you're watching online, listen, like Jesus is not contained by time or space. There's even going to be miracles online. Okay, are you guys ready? We're going to war in the spirit just for about a minute. And then we're going to lift up a shout of praise. Three, two, one, let's go. Come on, there's more than 10 people here. I want to hear you praying. Hey, Kitty. Yep, 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 a little louder. Lift up a, yep, upper room style, upper room style. Hey, kitty, yes. Okay, here we go. Here comes the shift. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Hey! Yeah. 
Yep, yep, right now. Every heavy yoke, every heavy yoke. Broken, 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 broken. Every heavy yoke, every heavy yoke, every heavy yoke, every heavy yoke. Yep, right now. Just declare it right now, right now, right now, right now. Hey, hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, just start moving in the glory. Just start moving in the glory. Just start moving in the glory. Free at last. Free at last. Free at last. Hey. Okay, listen. I just declare the kind of joy that would release strength to your whole body right now. I just declare joy unspeakable and full of glory right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Yep, yep, right now, right now, right now. Joy unspeakable and full. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Just declare, I'll believe the truth. I'll believe the truth. And the truth will set me free. Whoa, 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 the truth has set me free. The truth has set me free. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Let's just let them a shout of praise. All right. This morning we're going to be talking about get ready. Just look at the person next to you and say, get ready. Get ready. We're talking about a culture of preparation. In a series, Preparing for Outpouring, we've been talking about building a wineskin for awakening. Why do we need to talk about building a wineskin for awakening? Because listen now. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's what they do at my kid's school, you know. The, here, here's why we need a wineskin. Because there's no shortage of wine. But there is a shortage of wineskins. And we need a new wineskin. There's nothing wrong with old wine, but there's something wrong with old wineskins. Why? Because old wineskins, that's where the, that's where the, the, that's where the, um, the, 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 that's where the sediment begins to settle in into the wineskin that, that if you can siphon the wine out of the wineskin that the wine, there's nothing wrong with old wine but sometimes you need a new structure Sometimes you need a new structure. Sometimes you need to begin to integrate a structure and some disciplines and some values because there might not be anything wrong with the substance, but there might be something wrong with your structure. So what we're talking about here at Seattle Bible Center is not how to get more Holy Spirit. It's how do we steward the spirit that we've been given so that we can do great things together as a community, as the body of Christ. If you've got your Bibles, turn with me. Did you already do this, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2? All right, why don't you do that? You go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, um, verses 9 and 10, and I'll give you, I'll kind of give you a blueprint as to where we're going over the period of six weeks. Now, we already started this series. Week number one was where we talked about building an atmosphere or a culture of expectation. I wouldn't say expectation. Expectation is a big deal. Why? Because you get what you expect. You know, sometimes people say to me, I don't have a lot of faith. Well, sure you do. We all got faith. It's just sometimes we've got negative faith instead of positive faith. Yeah. So if you say, I just know I'm getting sick right now. Well, are you coughing? No. Do you have a sore throat? No. Do you have a fever? No. Then how do you know you're getting sick right now? I just know it. Yeah. What is that? That's faith. <laughs> but it's negative faith. You know, these gals are going to Cambodia, and so they have an expectation. What's their expectation? We don't get jet lag anymore. We don't get jet lag anymore. You don't? Since when? Since right now. That's our level of that. What is that? That's faith. Come on now. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've got to be declared. We've got to be careful what we're creating. You know what you're creating by what you're declaring. Yeah, anyways, that was, hey, if, if you weren't here, that was a good word. You can watch it on YouTube. Um, it's free. Uh, but, and so that's expectation. But expectation leads to something. What does it lead to? Preparation. That's what we're talking about today. And then we're going to talk next week. Oh, you'll want to be here next week. 
Why? Because part of our wineskin, moves of God, they are contingent or they break down and fall apart on the level of healthy communication. How do you know that revivals end not because God gets bored? Like the Welsh revival, two years and God's like, I'm done with Wales. And then the Welsh revival ended. You know what I'm saying? Like moves of God don't just end. They usually end somewhere around this idea of communicate. All right, and then we're going to talk about collaboration. That's a big deal. That's biblical. Okay, that'll preach. It's called the body of Christ, not the one man show. And then we're going to talk about evaluation. That's really good. Yep, it's really good. <laughs> evaluation means you set some expiration dates on some things. Why? Because you'll know a tree by its fruit. So if you're not fruitful, you can't just blame your lack of fruit on something super spiritual. The, you know, the reason why I'm this is because the spirit of jazz. No, no, the reason why is because you haven't honestly evaluated what you're doing. Sorry, just took away your spirit of Jezebel. You're going to have to figure out a different excuse, right? And then, and then the last thing is celebration. Now, I'm just going to give you a little teaser about celebration. You know, I think that Seattle Revival Center, that we should be the party church of the century. Yeah, I do. I think that, that partying should be kind of like our unspoken core value. Yeah, you because know, what, what are you talking about? Because I believe we're coming into a place that every week lost coins are going to be found. Yep, and lost little lambs are going to be discovered. And prodigal sons are going to come running home to get their hug from daddy. That every time a lost lamb is found, every time a coin is found, that every time a prodigal son comes home, there is a pot. <laughs> And I believe, I so believe that every week, we're coming to this point that every week we are going to be celebrating, we're going to be shouting, we're going to be singing, that the, the, we'll just keep the baptismal tank full of water. It'll be just like gross. It'll be awesome. Just like a nice little, you know, just keep it full. You know, add some chlorine, right? Add some baking soda. Add some, uh, whatever. I'm having fun. This is going to be good. So that's where we're going um, in, this, in, this, in this series. But enough about the future. Let's be present in this precious moment that we have together. Look at the person next to you and say, are you ready yet? Just say, yep, I'm ready. How about you? Yeah, I'm ready. Now, let me ask you a question before we go to the word. Let me ask you a question. How many of you guys remember back when you used to be able to eat whatever you wanted? Without any sort of repercussions. Let's be careful with this next one. How many of you guys remember when you used to be able to drink whatever you wanted? I'm talking about caffeine, okay? Okay. But there was no, like, repercussions of it, okay? How many of you guys remember um, when you used to be able to stay up as late as you wanted? And you could wake up as early as you wanted. And it was like, it was all good. Like, you, you could make it work, right? And then how many of you guys remember that moment when everything shifted? That when everything changed? And I'll tell you what that moment was. It was that moment you found out you were expecting. Yeah. Now, now some of you are like, what? I was with you up to that point. Like, some of you are getting really bummed out right now. Like, I never had that moment that I was expecting. Like, listen, you're, don't be such a literalist, okay? Um, like, just, just, this is a metaphorical example. Just go, oh, okay. All right. Now, how many, like, that moment you found out that you were expecting, and all of a sudden everything changed. Why? Because now, like, everything that you do, you are now doing for two. Okay, I'll tell you our story. Like, you know, when we found out that we were expecting with our very first child, you know, like, uh, like everything, everything radically began. To, like, it was most, like a lot of it was with Andrew, but some of it definitely affected me. Like, all of a sudden, the, like, like the, she likes uh, like chai tea uh, lattes. And now we're not doing, you know, we're not doing chai tea latte. And now all of a sudden, um, uh, in our home, we're now like painting bedrooms and we're like uh, uh, getting cribs and re uh, like we restored an old crib and we're, we're doing all this stuff. Like, like wh what, what happened there? What happened? I'll tell you, Look, we found out we were expecting, and then we began preparing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this is what we're talking about today here at Seattle Revival Center. We are expecting as a church, and we are preparing because God is going to be giving birth to some babies here in this place, and he's been preparing us for this moment for the last six months, but there is an urgency that we are feeling in the spirit, and I'm telling you, God is saying, get ready. Let's, 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 to the word, let's go. 
However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things that God has prepared for those who love him, these are the things God has revealed to us by the Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Everyone just say, my eye hasn't seen, my ears haven't heard, my imagination hasn't conceived, but the Lord will reveal these things to those who love him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, we're going to begin this whole thing of expectation all, 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 with, uh, with understanding the dynamics between prophecy and pregnancy. All right. Now, when we found out that we were expecting, okay, when our little world just got just radically changed um, in, in, in a moment, the way that we found it out, this can blow your mind, the way that we found it out was with a pregnancy test. Now, a pregnancy test, it'll actually give you a positive sign or a negative sign. And, and here's what happens. If you get a positive sign, this is an external device that tells you something that is invisible and is inevitable, and it is taking place inside. This is an external a tool that's telling you something very real and irreversible is taking place inside of you. Now, when it comes to prophecy and pregnancy, we're given a text out of Amos. Amos chapter uh, 3, verse 7. For the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets. Here's how this looks. This looks like the prophets of God. We have a conference coming up called Declaration Conference with Patricia King and Bobby Connor and Charlie Shant. And this is what this looks like. When we go into this conference, there's going to be God secrets, God ideas that are revealed through his prophets for us as a church, for us as a city, for us as a community, for us as a region. And here's what happens. All of a sudden, we realize the prophet is the pregnancy test, the prophet Prophet is the external indicator that lets you know something has changed forever. Something is taking place internal. It's inevitable. And it's going to manifest into something that's going to long outlast us. I don't know, like when you have a first child, there's this moment of gravity when you realize, you, I'm about, to, I'm not, I, I didn't even give birth to nothing, but like, like we are about to take responsibility for something that's going to be here longer than us. Let me just tell you something. Darren did not give birth to Seattle Revival Center. Bob Stott did not give birth to, Jack Ernst did not give birth to Seattle Revival, like that Seattle Revival Center was a God idea. It was a God dream, a God dream. It was, it, it was his idea that he gave birth through leadership and through a company of people. And there's something about the word of the Lord when all of a sudden you know you are radically changed. Now, nothing has changed on the outside, but everything has changed on the inside. And now you you have a responsibility to begin to steward the word. I want to just say steward the word. Because when you find out that you're carrying something, when you find out that you're carrying a God dream, when you find out that you're carrying a God vision, now there's a responsibility on you to begin preparing for what is about to take place, to begin preparing for the birth. Now, I can't prepare you, and you can't prepare me, but this is what I know. Every single time we gather, we need to be prepared. Why? There's an opportunity to give birth to something on the earth. That every time we gather, every time we sing, every time we read the word, every time we pray for an individual, we got to celebrate in our 9 a.m. service a, a powerful moment of awakening and transformation. Anthony got a, 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 a picture of, of one of the young men from Teen Challenge, and he looked like an engineer. You know, he looked like, um, a, a, like you know, a, a choo-choo, like a, a, a choo-choo train engineer. That's what you call him, right? Choo-choo trains. <laughs> They said they didn't call it the poo-poo train. You know, you know that book. A locomotive. Yeah. So he saw, he saw this young man, and, and, but you didn't give the word from the stage, but you found him after worship. Said, hey, this is crazy. I had this picture. 
and you looked like you looked like you were a, a train engineer, conductor, and you you had the whole getup on. And the guy began to freak out. Why? Because he had this whole train engineer thing in his family line, but he had said that he was disqualified to be an engineer because because in order to be an engineer, you have to have six months of sobriety, and they do a a, a hair follicle sample to tell if you've been if you've been sober. And to in this and and so he just ruled that out. All of a sudden, Pastor Anthony walks up to him and said, "Hey, I saw you." as a train engineer and he just he just began to flip out because he had disqualified himself from that place he came up on the stage and shared that he'd been sober for how long a long time a long time. It was good. And, and when he shared, hey, I've been sober. I've been clean. This, this is now a re- uh, This could happen. And he even shared that, uh, that, that they've offered him a $17,000 signing bonus if he can qualify with the drug. He's like, I can qualify. And, and now let me tell you something. His name is Marcus II. Now let me tell you about Marcus II. I don't know where you're at, but, but Marcus II is expecting now listen, listen, I don't know where you're at, but that was a prophetic word. It was a pregnancy test, and this is, this is what we saw. We saw for Marcus II, the, there's a plus sign, baby. Yeah, like, this, is, this is what we know for Marcus II, that, that, that this is an external, the prophetic is an external word that internally everything has changed, and it's about to change forever because there's no going back for Marcus II. He's about to give birth to what? We call this destiny. That's what we call this. We call this destiny. And this is why Seattle Revival Center exists. It exists to awaken people to their identity and destiny in Jesus Christ. So you can come in here feeling like a hopeless, helpless, despicable, shameful sinner. And then all of a sudden, we begin singing about grace. And we begin preaching about grace. And we begin talking about the kindness of God. And you come into this place feeling like an outsider, feeling like an orphan. But you leave this place saying, I I ain't no Audi. I'm in any. I ain't no orphan. I am a son. And there's this sense and spirit of awakening. And all of a sudden, before you know it, you ain't just getting prophetic words from people at SRC. Everywhere you go, you start seeing signs. What kind of signs, Pastor Darren? Thanks for asking. Plus signs that you say, everywhere I look, I see heavenly indicators that on the outside, nothing's changed. But on the inside, everything's changed. I'm pregnant. I'm expecting. I'm preparing. I'm doing things differently. We can do this. This ain't a sin. I can't do that. Why? Because I am pregnant. You can't be pregnant. You're a dude. You can't be pregnant. You're 90 years old. You can't be pregnant. Shut up. I'm full of expectation. I'm full of vision. I'm alive. Yo, don't disqualify me. You got 14 divorces. Shut up. I'm forgiven, I'm loved, and baby, I'm still alive. What's the devil going to do? Kill you? <laughs> Paul would say, what are you going to do, kill me? Death, where is your sting? You think, you think that my 60, 70, 80, 90, 120, however, however bold you want to be, you think that your 120 years here defines the trajectory of life abundantly that God, listen, don't ad- idolize the here and now. Let's give thanks for it, but this is just training for reigning. <laughs> You're going to be around a while. Yep, you sure are. I wouldn't tease you. <laughs> and when it comes to this place, when it comes to this place of what God is, is doing, we realize that there's a lot of good ideas, amen? But then there are God ideas. And I believe that God is releasing God ideas in this time, in this season, and it's going to require you to carry something for longer than an hour. Stay. I'm sad. Why are you sad? I got a prophetic word. Okay, so what's up? It didn't come true. Well, when did you get it? Last month. If you take the test, you'll still see. You still got the plus sign. Three months, six months. Ask David how long it took. 
Hey, forget David. Ask Jesus how long it took before he got to see the manifestation of his recognized kingship and priest, priestly call on the earth. How, how, 30 years of being hidden before finally Jesus was publicly recognized and his ministry began. I'm telling you, the longer you get to carry it, the more worth it it's going to be. Don't let the enemy prematurely give birth to something out of its time, and don't let the enemy get you to abort something before its time. If he spoke it into you, it's worth carrying. Nobody else can see it, but you know everything's changed. You're carrying a God dream. Good ideas, they come and go like the wind. But God ideas require conviction, fortitude, and administration. I said conviction, you're like, heck yeah. I said fortitude, you're like, I don't even know what that means, but all right. <laughs> I said administration, you're like, okay, I'm out. <laughs> then when we talk about preparation, when we talk about preparation, what, like, like, what we're actually talking about is functionally administrating the God dream. That You begin to do scheduling different. You begin to do finances different. You begin to do family different. Why? Because you're not just alive. You're alive for such a time as this. There's like an urgency on the present. There's like this urgency. Why? Because you know you got a what? You know you got a due date. And sometimes we need to set a date. Whenever I meet with um, a couple that's thinking about getting married, um, one of the first things I ask, and now I don't do this as much anymore. Thanks, Pastor Anthony. Love you, bro. <laughs> but, um, uh, and Brian, I'm going to have you help me because my cell phone's kind of in and out with connecting back there. Um, but when it, comes to setting, when it comes to setting a date, um, you need to set a due date. A due date when you say, my expectation and my preparation is going to manifest into an actualization of this thing that I've been contending for. So here at Seattle Vital Center, we've got a scroll out here in the hallway. And the scroll is our new mission statement. And the mission statement is what? It's awakening people to their identity and destiny in Jesus Christ. And, and, and we're saying, there's going to be a lot of babies around here. And there's going to be a lot of, uh, there's going to be a lot of people coming home and meeting, and meeting Jesus. And we're saying, we're getting everything ready. We're getting our children's classrooms ready. We're going we're gonna to get these walls ready. We're getting these chairs. We're getting, every, we're getting everything ready. Ready for what? Ready for awakening. And so what do we do? We set a date. So what's our due date? 329. And we say, March 29, 2020. What happens on March 29, 2020? This is what we talked about at our, um, at our vision night. What happens? We go from two services to three services. We're doing a 9, 11, and a 5 p.m. Well, that'll be convenient. Yeah, I know. It's, it's convenient. But we're not doing it to be convenient for, for people that are already awakened to their sonship. We're doing it because nowadays so many people have to work on Sunday morning. No, I shouldn't say that. So many people actually want to work on Sunday morning. Why? Because you can make way more money if you can volunteer. Like, you know, it ain't cheap living in Seattle. Yeah, also this whole thing of, 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 of sports. Sports is a pretty big deal these days. Like, why are we adding a five? Sure, practically, it's going to make sense in our, in our children's ministries, get things smaller, have another option. There's a lot of other reasons. But this is what we believe. 329 is our due date. And on 329, there's going to be people in the 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and 5 p.m. that have never had an encounter with Holy Spirit. This is what we believe. At, at, at the 5 p.m., there's going to be people that said, hey, I'm not against the church. I've been wanting to go to church, but there's just not a lot of options for a Sunday night. And it's nice that we can get home at a decent time. This is what I know. Change is in the air. Get ready. Everyone just declare, get ready. Change is in the air. Get ready. Listen, in um, 2018, uh, at, at, at our, at our um, camp meeting conference, um, Mahesh Shavda was here. Mahesh Kambani Shavda. And he released a prophetic word about babies. And what happened was, all of a sudden, within nine months, we had all these babies that were being born. Yeah, people that couldn't have babies were finding out that they were expecting People that could have babies found out that they're expecting. <laughs> Pastor Anthony and Rebecca, they've been wanting another, another baby. All of a sudden, guess what? We're expecting. What do they do? Their expectation, they begin their preparation, okay? Now, 
there's another couple that's like a lot of couples here, right? The whites and like, you know, a Caesar and, and yeah, come on, those babies back there. Like, like a lot, like, you know, Sharice and like, like, you know, nine baby girls born within nine months. I know you're like cautiously clapping. I don't, I don't want to clap too hard because if I do, that might be honor and then I might receive a reward that I, okay. <laughs> you're like, okay, good for them. Like, like Andrea and I, we weren't, we weren't really, that wasn't on our th- list of things to do that year. So Pastor Anthony and Rebecca find out they're pregnant. Now it's Pastor Darren and, and Andrew. We find out that all these babies started, started being born. And guess what the Lord spoke to us? He said, first in the natural, then in the spirit. Get your nurseries ready. Get your house in order. Why? Because the babies are coming. The babies are coming. Yeah. Yeah, we need to be in preparing. Now, you can say, well, that ain't my problem. I ain't having no baby. I've been there, done that, or I just never chose to go there, or just didn't work out for me. But, I, like, I ain't going. Now, here, here's the problem that I see sometimes in the church. Sometimes we don't make preparation personal. What do I mean by that? I mean, somebody else gets a prophetic word, and you're like, well, it ain't my word. And then somebody else gets a real nice word, and then you get disappointed because you would have liked a nice word. Somebody else gets the good job. You've been praying for five years. Somebody else gets the good job. You're at work. You should have been promoted. Instead, you're ignored. And somebody that doesn't even do a good job got your job. That oftentimes, when preparation isn't personal, we don't rejoice with those who rejoice. We don't mourn with those who mourn. And sometimes we have a lot of hope deferred and our heart gets sick. Why? Because we think this is just their deal. How do I, like, this has nothing to do with me. The problem with that is one word family. You see, if you were in our house and you found out that we're expecting, you don't get to be a spectator of that change. Why? Because if you're in the Stott family and you find out that Victoria is about to be born, you know everything at home is about to change forever. You see, when we don't have a revelation of family, then oftentimes we think that other people's promotion or devastation doesn't affect us, but it affects us radically. Why? Because I can't step into my promotion if I can't celebrate yours. That in this place, when we talk about vision, we talk about preparation, when we talk about collaboration and communication, we're not talking about the SRC staff. We're talking about the SRC family. And this is what this means, that we've got to see that we're not just in the body. We are vital body parts, intricately connected. You can be in a body, but not of a body. You know what that's called? Food. Food, listen, some of you aren't connecting the dots. Food doesn't stay in a body for very long. You ain't food. So don't, don't act like that. Oh, I'm just here. What you do doesn't affect me. What I do doesn't affect you. No, no, no. What you do now affects the two. You see, we'd sit our children down and say, Mommy and Daddy, we're expecting. It's time for us to begin preparing. But your participation is vital. Why? Because this isn't just Mommy and Daddy. We're a family. And these changes, they affect all of us. That when somebody gives their life to Jesus, 
that change, it affects all of us. This is what I know. One man in modern contemporary times cannot change the world. That God has given us a model, and it's the family of God. It's the bride of Christ. It's the body of believers. It's every person intricately linked and synced up with each other and with the Lord. This was the prayer of Jesus. This was the, the, the actual Lord's prayer. That we would be one just as He is one. That was the desire when Jesus went before the Father and began to pray. He said, I know your will and you know mine. This is your will. That we would be one that there would be a, a, a unity and an interconnectedness. That there would be this place where we can, that we can together say, we have the mind of Christ. And I can do that, not because I'm called to do that. I can do that because I see that you're struggling. So I can help you without losing my identity. I can, I can co-labor with you. Why? Because we're a family. Listen, I'm going to just talk for a second. I did something incredible this morning in preparation for this service. I did the dishes. But guess what? That's not a part of my calling. God didn't call. That's not my new identity. I'm an apostolic dishwasher. You know why I did the dishes? Because the dishes needed to be done. That's what you do in family. This is where the Lord is inviting us. That if you've connected here at SRC, it's, it's no longer when you talk, you're like, well, at your church. No, no, no. It's our church. It's his church. You know, the problem with the church is, no, 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 no. I'm just going to delete, delete that from my vocabulary completely. Why? Because every time you talk negatively about the church, you're talking negatively about someone's wife. This is the question. There's an invitation. Do you want to do Family. Families forever. You can be a punk, but you're still family. You can run away. You can reject a family altogether, but you're still family. I have a prophetic song of the Lord I'd like to sing over you. We are family. <laughs> Brothers and sisters are we. We are family. That's enough. Let's stand. <laughs> we are. Hey, you feel like, here's a question. You feel like an outsider, like you never quite fit in, like you never, you just kind of want to play it safe, like, like part, your preparation isn't personal. Everybody else is pregnant, but not you. This is your time to rejoice with those who rejoice, to mourn with those who mourn, to say, I'm not going to play it safe. I'm going to weave myself, not just into Seattle Bible, yes, into Seattle Bible, but I'm going to, it's going to be representative of my interweaving into the kingdom of God. That as you interweave your heart, as you make your heart available, you become part of something greater than just SRC. You become greater than just something, a charismatic little movement. No, you, be, you become a very significant part of this global, cosmic, generational. Think about all the saints that have ever lived. Think about this for a second. All the saints that have ever lived are not actually dead. 
They are just as alive, more now than they've ever been. They got their own reserved seats in a cloud. It's, it's a little bit bigger than, than the Seahawks stadium. Just a little bit. And they're not cheering on the Seahawks. They're cheering you on. They're cheering you on. The innumerable great cloud of witnesses. You're in. The orphan thing, that's a lie. The outsider thing, that's a lie. You win, you family. No, I'm not, I'm just gonna run. Enjoy the whale. You'll get your kiss, you'll get your ring, you'll get your robe. Why, because I just declared it, you just heard it, and now, you're like, I don't let my free will feel, it doesn't matter, his love is gonna come after you. His grace is coming after you. His kindness is coming after you. Every generational demonic curse is gonna be so easily snapped like a little twig. His love is coming after you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your spirit of awakening that's in our hearts, that we're alive for such as, Lord, thank you, Lord, that that tiredness thing is not gonna affect us this week. That seasonal disorder thing, it's not gonna affect us this week. Even some of you, you're not gonna need those, those drugs anymore. Why? Because even on cloudy days, you're going to feel the sun shining from his face. I declare joy unspeakable, full of glory. Hope that doesn't disappoint. Dreams that come true like a tree of life. I declare you, you're not just born. You're born for this day, for this time, for this space. Seattle needs you. Seattle Revival Center needs you. The kingdom of God is in need of you. You're not an outsider. You're an insider. I pray that you would be awakened to your identity and your destiny in Jesus Christ. That you would know you're a choo-choo train engineer. Choo-choo.